respectfully request that they vacate the park so you can enforce the ordinance. Is that right? Yes. Now, you, did you explain to them again that the park curfew was 11 p.m. and that's why you were there and trying to enforce it? Yes. Now, when you say that you hope not to take any enforcement action the second time, what do you mean by that? I, um, I meant just that. I, I um, had a lot of respect for these people. I had a, a lot of respect for the, the gesture they made for us, uh, for the police athletic league race. And um, I, was, I, was, I was conflicted to some degree. Um, I knew what my responsibilities were, and I knew that ultimately that I would probably, uh, the police department under my direction would have to issue some citations and potentially affect some arrests. Um, but my hope was that I could convince them to leave the park without having to do that. Um, again, I guess I, I again, I, I had a, a definitive degree of respect for these people and um, I, I, I didn't want to see any of them get in trouble. And you're in, what does your respect come from, from them being so cooperative as you've explained? They have, they were, um, they treated me and my officers uh, with respect. They um, were open to speak to us. They made that uh, significant gesture I already discussed. Um, during the foot race for the Fallen, um, I was working at a traffic post on, on Chestnut Street, um, right at um, right by the Vine Street garage, and I saw members of Occupy helping police officers set up barricades. Um, I was aware that they were asking officers that were out there if they wanted a cup of coffee. It was just, um, I had a nice couple with a child come over and talk to me. Um, very nice uh, conversation I had with them. I just, um, when they, when they first came, admittingly, I didn't know what, what to expect, and I didn't know what type of reaction we would get when we interacted with them, but they demonstrated um, uh, that they were people of principle and they stuck to their principles and, and they talked to us and um, we didn't agree on everything, uh, but there was a mutual respect and, and um, likewise the treatment was uh, respectful, uh, in my opinion, both ways. Not to say there weren't any bumps in the road, there, there were, uh, but. 99% of our interaction was very, very positive. And um, would you say uh, them showing you respect and you showing them respect, is that is that why you gave them so many opportunities to leave the park before starting to issue citations? I sincerely hope they would leave without having us to have, to having to take an enforcement action. Now, Captain Cunha, were you trying to prevent the people in the park on October 19th from exercising their, their rights to freedom of speech? Would you have allowed the people to protest somewhere if they had left the park and went to go protest somewhere else? Yes, I actually, I actually said that. Um, I talked to them about continuing their activities. I, I referred to the First Amendment at one point that they can continue their, their activities out on the on the um, First Amendment activities out on the sidewalk. But I did ask them to not obstruct the sidewalk so that if a pedestrian needed to walk by, they had to go on the street at night. I asked them not to go in the traffic so nobody gets hit by a car. Um, you know that type of night, like I, that time of night, like I said, some of the bars people are coming and going from the bars and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, basically I did tell them that they could continue what they were doing. It was just, after 11 p.m., you just can't do it in the park. One gentleman asked when he could come back, and he, I said 7 a.m., and then you know, he indicated he'd be back at 7, or I'd see him at 7 a.m. So they were allowed back the next day? Anybody, I don't know if he came back, uh, that gentleman or anybody else. I, I yeah, the, the, it was basically, it wasn't so much what they were doing, it was the time and place where they were doing it because it violated the park curfew. Okay. And so they could be, what time does the, the park reopen? 7 a.m. So the park's open for 16 hours a day? Correct. Now after you tell, um, or I should say, why did you enforce the park curfew on October 19th? Let me ask you that. Well, um, technically we should have enforced it on Saturday the 15th. Um, but the Chief Mayor was afforded discretion um, and, and he is his point person as well, has afforded some discretion. And with what we had established relationship-wise, in my opinion, it would have been a mistake to go on that far, victory park on Saturday and clear them. Um, after they made the gesture they did, it would have, wouldn't have been the appropriate action. So we exercised some discretion and allowed them to violate our park curfew for a, a series of nights. Um, and it got to a point where we had to meet our obligations. When I had 
sent an email out to, to my, the officers. I actually said to them, we're, we're not enforcing the, park, the curfew with these folks. We have to be consistent, we have to be fair. Don't enforce it anywhere else. You can't write somebody in Livingston Park on the same night that we allowed Occupy to stay. So it created a logistical problem for us because now you know, we basically are saying that we're not going to enforce our own ordinances and that's, that's, that, that's problematic and that's where um, a lot of the, uh, I guess the pressure is generated you think about other people that have been cited, and how do you how do you now say that you're not going to cite certain people when you have cited people in the past or ask people to leave? Probably more often than not, we ask people to leave and they leave uh, in the past. Um, so there was there was um, some level of, of, of pressure building. Um, we knew what our responsibilities were, and, and it, it got to the point that that on that Wednesday it was decided that we've we've afforded as much discretion as we as we really can, and now it's time. For us to meet our responsibilities. And is that an ordinance routinely enforced by the Manchester Police Department? It is, yeah, we enforce that ordinance. Now, after you told everybody um, you gave them the option to leave, did everybody leave? No. What did some people opt to do? Um, so, well, we were kind of standing there, and I had people with the cameras. I didn't know necessarily who was there as. as potentially media or, or, or just curious citizens uh, versus the Occupy folks. I was trying to ascertain, you know, yeah, instead of us just sitting here looking, I mean, is there a way for me to tell who's, who's, who's like standing their ground to, to receive a, a <coughs> ordinance summons? And ultimately, again, another, another gesture, uh, from, uh, respectful gesture from Occupy, um, they, they indicated that, that they would be willing to line up to make it easier. They asked me if that would be something that I would like, and I absolutely would, would like something like that. Um, so they, they um, opted to, for the benefit of the people videoing, because I was asking people videoing to, that they were not excluded, they, they had to leave the park as well. So for their benefit, they asked to move over by um, one of the entrances on the Merrimack Street side so that the lighting was better, so that the people videoing could still video and get some purposeful video and not you know be so far away. Um, and then um, folks that were uh, protesting, continuing to protest, lined up, uh, for the most part lined up, and um, officers that were assisting came uh, with their with their handheld clipboards and tins, and, and they were writing the city on the summonses to the people that didn't want to leave. So is it fair to say some people did leave without any yes, citation? Yes, that, yes. And then some people, as you said, lined up for a citation? Correct. And, um, and then was there, after the citations were given, um, was that the end of it, or were there still people in the park? No, there was still there was still some people that um, um, respectfully uh, declined to to leave, and um, those people ultimately were taken into custody. Those four initially, and then then one additional. And they were and were they given the option to leave before being arrested? Yes. And they chose to stay there. Yes. And be arrested. That's correct. And three of those people are the defendants who are seated here today. Is that correct? Yes. start with something that you said um, you talked about uh, there was some other action and people were involved and they were videoing and so that was a concern of yours. It, that had nothing to do with it, this Occupy no, I mean, That's right. Yeah, it had nothing to do with these folks but uh, not knowing fully necessarily how this was going to play out. There was no guarantees. Um, we had brought our own officer to video uh, based on, on some lessons that we had learned in that prior. Again, it didn't involve Occupy. 
to, to the best of my knowledge at all, and it didn't involve any of these folks. Okay. Um, so this um, clearing the park took place on October 19th, is that right? Yes, it is. But the um, Occupy movement had been encamped in Manchester since October 15th, is that right? That is correct. So I want to, um, and, and actually you knew um, about this encampment before it occurred. Yes. Um, there, uh, someone had put in a permit to stay in Veterans Park, is that right? Cool. Um, the Victory Park. The permit application was for Victory Park. Okay, I don't want to quibble with you. There was, a, there was a permit for some park. Yes, there was a, there was a park permit, correct, yes. Okay. Um, the, the permit was granted. Did you, I'm sorry, you say it was or was it? The permit wasn't? was not granted. Um, I, I have conflicting information on that. Um, my belief is that it was granted till 11 p.m. Okay. That was my understanding. Um, I've since gotten information saying it wasn't, but that, again, I have conflicting information on that. My understanding at the time was that it was granted till 11 p.m. Um, and, and the reason uh, for the permit, people have, when they apply for something, they tell you why they're applying for it. Yes. In this case, uh, the Occupy, members of the Occupy movement said they were applying for a permit to redress grievances. That's correct. And redress grievances is allowed by the Constitution. Correct. Um, and maybe the permit was granted wasn't, um, you're not really sure. Again, I have conflicting information. My understanding is it was granted, but I mean, I've been since told that it wasn't, so I, I, I guess I don't have a definitive answer on that, but my understanding is it was. And you, so the police knew that the um, occupation, um, I'll call it the occupation in Manchester, was scheduled to start on October 15th. That's correct. And it was your understanding that people wanted to occupy Veterans Park right out here. Yes. Um, and that was a problem for you. Yes. And the reason it was a problem was that on October 16th, there was this race for the following that you told the jury about. That's correct. So you had some conversation with members of Occupy, and, um, and they agreed to accommodate you. It wasn't me specifically, but there was Chief Mara reached that agreement. You law enforcement. Oh, yeah, yeah, the police department, yes, I'm sorry. And instead of occupying Veterans Park, they went over to Occupy Victory Park. Correct. And Victory Park is, I don't know, maybe three blocks um, north. Exactly. So, and that occupation, in fact, did take place, correct? Yes. Tents were set up at Victory Park. Yes, they were. Um, did you go over and take a look at Victory Park at all? I did. On, um, um, I, I, drove, I drove by there, but I actually went and, and interacted with someone there. I had a conversation with someone there on that following Monday. Um, so you saw tents were there? Correct. You saw that people were engaged in various dialogues? Yes, that's fair. There were a lot of signs at Victory Park. Signs, yes. me about if I've been to Victory Park, but I, I already testified as well that I had worked at Road Race, so I had been out there interacting. I did interact with some people uh, that Sunday as well, um, the, the couple with the child, and then I was, like I said, working at Road Race, so I actually saw the encampment that day. Okay. And, and while you were at Victory Park, you saw people holding various signs, is that right? That's my recollection, yes. Do you remember signs like, bail out people, not banks? I 
saw those, I seen those signs along the way. Um, and they, I don't want to mix up the two parks. I mean, I, I did see some signs, signs called banks, 99% like signs. There is enough share. There is enough to share the wealth. I may have seen that sign. I don't specifically remember that one. Robin Hood was right. You say that that sign, I, I, I think I might have seen that sign. I won't believe corporations or people until Texas executes one. <laughs> I don't know if I remember that sign. But those were the various signs that you saw. I do remember seeing some of those signs. So it was clear to you what was going on in that park was political speech. Yes. Um, the people, um, the folks uh, agreed to move from Veterans Park to Victory Park, and they stayed there until October 17th, is that correct? It's a Monday. They were still, when I went to the park on the 17th, they were still there. So some point after that, they moved. I'm not sure if it was, I can't say for sure that it was definitely Monday or, or, or early Tuesday or some point during Tuesday. Um, my recollection is we, we had met Tuesday morning, my, my recollection was they had already moved at that point, but I don't know exactly when they moved. Uh, you didn't clear Victory Park on October 15th. No, we did not. And you told us you used to Yes. You didn't clear Victory Park on October 16th. We did not. Um, if, if folks set up uh, a Veterans Park on October 17th, Um, after uh, people left Victory Park, did you go to take a look at Victory Park and see the condition it was left in? I don't know if I specifically went to, to look at it. I, I parked, at the time I parked in the parking garage, and I remember when this was going on, I would always look over when I was coming in, so I may have taken a look from across the street. But I, I, I don't recall that I specifically went to the park. I don't recall that. Um, for the time that people were camped out from October 15th to, to, to the park on October 19th, there were no um, uh, uh, reports of assaultive behavior in the park? Not that I can articulate right now, that I recall. There was no reports of disruptive behavior? Remember there. I want to qualify as disruptive behavior. There was some concern about the noise with the drums. Drum. Uh, but that was something that we were able to resolve. I, I, as far as like tumultuous type behavior, no. On October 15th, I think the first night people were drumming and they were told it was too noisy and noisy and they stopped. Is that right? That's, that's correct. Um, there were no uh, complaints of litter in the park. Do you have an objection? No, thanks. Well, uh, My understanding is, is when they left Victory Park, they was left probably cleaner than had been in a long time. Uh, no complaints of uh, disruptive or drinking in the park? Um, they, we had different Occupy uh, events in the city. And at some point, I mean, I can't say for sure it was during these, but I remember there was some concerns voiced to us about people not complying with their rules. My understanding of the rules were people weren't supposed to be drinking and doing other things. And I have some level of recollection that, that maybe some people weren't necessarily doing what they were being asked. But again, I, I, not, I can't say for certain when that conversation took place, but I do have some recollection that not everybody was, was complying with Occupy's rules. Okay, so, so what's the parsing down 
there was a rule of, of, of Occupy that people should not assume drugs, people should not drink. That was my understanding, yes. Would you agree with me that this is a peaceable assembly? I think we're very peaceful. Now, we talked a little bit about how you didn't enforce the, oh, but, oh wait, what is an ordinance? How does an ordinance come to be? Um, ultimately, the Board of Mayor and Alden approve ordinances. Uh, different, from my experience, is different divisions uh, within the city or different departments within the city can bring an ordinance. Um, uh, you know, we recently brought something relative to commercial vehicles from the police department. My understanding that different city agencies can propose ordinances and ultimately it gets it goes before committees and it gets voted on ultimately by the Board of Mayor and all is my understanding. So it's a law that's specific to a specific to a certain municipality. Ordinances are, are local. Towns have them, cities have them. Yes. You have no authority to regulate the park in Bedford. No, no, not at all. Um, On October 19th, you received an email, you, I think it was actually you personally, received an email from the mayor's office, is that right? Yes. And, um, and it basically said something like, why are the campers in Victory Park allowed to stand in violation of city ordinance 9604 and 9606? And that <coughs> night was the night that the police uh, undertook this enforcement action. Yes. And when you went to Veterans Park at 9 o'clock, you had a conversation with the occupiers. As, as we heard a little bit about earlier. And you approached them using their point of order, hand signal. That was actually uh, later council. That was the second time I came back. Did you do that at 9 o'clock as well? Oh, that I did. Um, if I did it, we, excuse me, if I did it, we, I'm doing it there. <coughs> excuse me. Just don't spill it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you told, what you told the occupiers at that time was that um, the city would no longer allow its curfew ordinance to be violated. And um, you also told the occupiers, Captain, that you appreciate everything they've done and that you admire their principles. That's correct. Uh, and then you, um, you devised an enforcement that, that you hoped would clear everyone out of the park without having to make an arrest. Correct. Uh, you were aware of um, uh, occupies, uh, occupations of, of large cities and small cities throughout the country. Yes. And you know, you were aware that some of those occupations um, had ended uh, violently when the police came to arrest people. There were, there were, I did have some knowledge of that, yes. Uh, and you were also aware that some of them had had ended uh, completely non-violently. Um, I, I believe I, I'm trying to think of examples. Um, I believe that I did that as well. And uh, you were also aware that some occupations were simply continuing without any government interference whatsoever. Um, I guess I knew some were continuing as far as what level the gov local governments were involved. I think it's hard for me to say. You came back, uh, you the police came back to the park at 11 p.m., correct? Correct. And by 12.30 a.m., the park was cleared. I, I don't know the exact time that I, I, I estimated, I estimate that it probably took about an hour to 90 minutes, if that, that sounds about accurate. Now, while um, the occupation was occurring in Manchester, 
the, the police had meetings about how to deal with it. Yes. And the police had meetings with city officials about how to deal with the occupation. Yes. Um, and um, you, uh, and I, this is a collective you, the police, the city officials, you, um, you looked at the ordinance, the park ordinance. Correct. As a matter of fact, you kindly sent me a, a file that you kept about the occupation, correct? Correct. And um, in your file, there's a, there's a, um, a copy of the park, what's called the park operating policy. Yes. Correct. So, That's fine, it's just the park ordinance. And um, you also took a look at, I guess, Section 4717 of our uh, state laws that have to do with powers of the city. Is that right? Yes. Because you wanted to make sure that you were on good legal standing. I don't know. I saw that in there. Um, I don't remember exactly why. I, I made that copy. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I, mean, I, knew, I knew that the, the ordinance was in effect. Uh, so as far as legal standing, I, I didn't have cause to believe that we weren't on good legal standing. So I'm not exactly sure why, Paula, you may be correct. I just, I, when I saw it I, in the file after this amount of time, I didn't remember exactly why I did that. How long is the ordinance? It's the permit file. Two, two, two sentences, I think. Just read it instead of okay. sending it through. I think it would be more effective. Then they can listen to you and concentrate on your examination. Um, what do you read? Six hundred four Park Operating Policy, uh, subparagraph A. Parks shall be closed in the public or to the public every day of the year from 11 p.m. until 7 a.m. Except for such such functions as fireworks displays and such other community programs as may be authorized by the Public Works Director or his or her designee. you had a concern about making sure that you were fair, that um, if you didn't enforce the ordinance in Veterans Park, then you couldn't enforce the ordinance in other um, parks throughout Manchester. That's correct. So I want to ask you a few questions about that. Absolutely. Um, one of the reasons that, uh, that you talked about that the ordinance exists is to, present, is to prevent um, assaultive behavior of factors including that, yes. Assaults aren't protected by the Constitution, are they? No. Um, drinking in the park isn't protected by the Constitution, is it? No, it's not. Vandalism is not protected by the Constitution. No, it's not. And um, uh, disruptive conduct, even, is not protected by the Constitution, is it? Depending on the, what, what the conduct is, that's, yeah, that's potentially, yeah, right. What is protected by the Constitution is political speech. Yes. Peaceful assembly. Yes. Redress of grievances from your government. Yes. Captain, um, 
council is asking about your aware about other occupations. Are you aware that also that some of these occupations took place on private property? We maybe at the time we had discussed quite a bit uh, the private property option for, for occupy to try to give them maybe an option. Um, I think at that time I may have been aware of it. I, I'm, I'm hard pressed to think of an example of one. Are you aware that throughout the country though there have been some occupies on private property? Yeah, I may have been aware at that time at this point as I'm sitting here. I can't think of any examples, but we did discuss the private property option. Now, why did you decide, why did you wait till October 19th to enforce the ordinance that you routinely enforce? It really came down to discretion. And um, again, I already, I don't want to rehash it, but what these folks had demonstrated was a willingness to negotiate. So we, it was in its own form a, a, a level of reciprocation. Um, we afforded them some discretion to remain and, and participate in their activities in the park past 11. Again, there was no concern as far as the other hours or anywhere else, but as far as being in the park, um, we, we exercised some discretion to let them uh, to, do, to do that. Um, and then ultimately, it came to a point where we really weren't in a position to to, to afford them any, any more discretion in that regard. And so the 19th was the date that was decided upon to, to clear the park. And why not? Why weren't you afforded to give them any more discretion after the 19th? Um, again, the pressure the pressure was building. Uh, and we we had um, you know we had met with other city officials, and you know the emails were being sent about different things about the food, um, about um, you know if there was food being served at this certain concerns in that regard if there's this um, that you know that from the parks we got one relative to you know that the park ordinance is being ignored there's a there's an RV by Victory Park there's, there's wires there's different things going on so collaboratively when, when we had met with the city officials um, there was a there was a collaborative expectation that we had a responsibility to clear this park um, and uh, again the, it's, the way I remember it is the mayor had given the chief he had his expectations like we all did. Um, and we ultimately answered to him. Uh, but the way I remember is he gave Chief Merritt the discretion and the authority to, to deal with this. And we had that objective that we had to eventually get these folks out of the park um, as far as 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, but we were afforded discretion to do it. And um, we elected to, to do it in the way we did. And then on the 19th was the, the final decision was made. Is it fair to say that you elected to wait the, from the 15th to the 19th uh, to give them leeway to keep keep the, the goodwill as you would or mutual respect going? Yeah, and that, that, that's, that's what I was trying to convey. That exactly, and, and we didn't we didn't want this to turn ugly. It, it hadn't been ugly to this point. Um, it had gone better than I could ever have hoped. And going in on the 15th would have been a, would have been a, a in my opinion, as a, as a as a veteran police officer, would have been a big mistake. We have discretion that we apply um, when someone gets pulled over. We don't always give them a, a, a ticket. We give warnings uh, more often than not. In other circumstances with the park, we give we give probably more warnings than we give tickets. Um, we were afforded some level of discretion, and we did utilize that here. But again, when you go out further, you've got you know, people that have been cited that, that I was concerned about. Um, how fair is that to them? As we go forward and we're allowing this to happen, uh, Attorney Keshin referenced the email uh, that I got from a citizen citing the ordinance asking, um, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are they being allowed to stay? Uh, and, and, and we are answerable, ultimately we're answerable to the citizens. And, and I responded back to that job. I didn't ignore his email. I responded back to him um, because I feel that I was obligated to do it. So we were, the pressure was building. Um, I was hoping to get them out without having to cite anybody. Uh, it didn't go that way, um, but um, I hope that answers your question. We, we just really had to do something at that point. Now, um, you, when you're talking about discretion, you had mentioned like you know when, when a police officer pulls over a car and gives a warning. Does that mean that the officer condones the speeding? No. So the fact that you didn't give a citation or or force them out of the park, did that mean that you agreed that with them breaking the law? As far as the park curfew orders, yep. no, it didn't mean we agreed with it. it didn't mean we we afforded them. We, Utilized some discretion and afforded them some space, um, but I didn't agree that they should be remaining in the park. Did you agree that they should commit crimes to, to be able to get their message across? No. 
Now, you don't prevent people from exercising their right to free speech. Now, defense counsel had mentioned um, free speech and things that people do. Is criminal threatening protected by the Constitution? No, it's not. But that's, criminal threatening can be the use of somebody's words when they're committing a criminal threatening. Is that true? Yes. Right. But that's not protected, is it? It's not. And the Constitution doesn't protect all speech, does it? No. There are certain uh, limitations as to time, manner, and place. Is that correct? Yes. So it's not an absolute... It's not, speech is not absolute where you can do it anytime, any place, anywhere that you want. That, that's correct. Now, were you worried about the occupier safety while they were camping on October 15th through the 19th or through the 18th? Yes, I was. And can you explain that? Why were you concerned? Um, I've been a police officer in the city since 1994, and um, I've seen you know, different crimes dealt with different people. The occupiers uh, uh, have a, a strong potential for violence. Um, Sorry, I didn't hear what you just said. I, I've dealt with people that have a strong potential for violence, unlike the occupiers. Um, and my concern was uh, for them, their safety, their property. Um, and I remember there being some discussion about the move from victory to, to veterans uh, and some of the, the clientele that we deal with sometimes. Um, and, and I did have concerns about them trying to take advantage of the occupiers and getting in amongst them because, again, they were very welcoming people. I wasn't aware that they were turning anybody away. Um, and I was concerned that some of these people who may have um, um, less than honorable intentions were going to get in there and potentially um, uh, perpetrate an offense against uh, these occupiers who, again, were just welcoming people in. Do you have, <clears throat> excuse me, did you have officers go to the parks routinely to, like, check and like drive around on their routes and whatever else there is? Officers were going by, I had driven by uh, myself. Um, one time we went by my family and my kids in the car went by, I think on, on a Saturday we drove by. Uh, so different people were checking the parks and, and um, I had asked anybody if there was any issues that came up to please, to please notify the chief and I. Um, when you, um, enforced the ordinance um, on October 19th, uh, 2011. Were you concerned about not enforcing the ordinance would create a slippery slope with respect to other groups as well, using this park to camp? That was, that was I, I don't remember the source of it, that was one of the concerns that, that, I, that had been presented to me at somewhere along the way. Um, again, I, I apologize, I don't remember exactly who said it, but I remember someone um, putting an assertion out there that somehow Tea Party was shortchanged because we didn't treat them the way we were treating Occupy or allowing Occupy to do these things. Would we have done that with the Tea Party? Um, that, that, that concern that we were showing preferential treatment to Occupy and treating them differently, um, that, that, was, that was one of my concerns and one of the things that had come up. Again, I apologize, I don't remember the source of it. Now, is your knowledge that uh, you had testified um, on cross-examination when defense counsel was asking a question about your knowledge as to some Occupy demonstrations ending violently? Um, is that one of the reasons why you waited to develop a positive relationship with the demonstrators before asking them to leave? That was all part of it. I, I felt that they, they deserved it, and I also felt that it was um, it was important to, to not let this get out. And, and so, yeah, we did wait, try to build on it, try to discuss the private property option, try to see if there was a way maybe we could, we could get to a mutual exit strategy short of an enforcement action. And unfortunately, it, it didn't come to that by October 19th, and, and we had to do you think of any other political group that has asked to remain overnight at the um, Manchester Parks? No. Thank you.